brothers and sisters, as a believer, yet a sinner in our natural disposition, there could have been many times that we have prayed for the Lord to do some renovation works for our spirit, because who knows the depths of our hearts better, right? When we do not receive the transformation that is brought forth by the Lord, we will know that many of the changes we have are only temporary or inconsistent. Not only will we not receive spiritual growth, we may also get into a state of stagnancy and thus numbness. Even though we may have a relatively smooth sailing life, without much troubles and dramatic hurdles, one still needs to receive spiritual reflection and renewal within us from time to time. If not, we may be too complacent and start to seek the Lord's counsel lesser in our living. Now, if a believer does not often test, affirm, and relook at their relationship with the Lord, he or she will graduate towards a tendency to walk their own way, living life by their own desires. But knowing this, why do so many believers still have their spirits unrenovated and left to breed more disbelief or indifferences? It could be caused by the fact that there are some helplessness in certain areas of their lives for a long while, for example, a sickly loved one, fertile from an unsatisfactory job, unhappy relationships with people, shallow brethren living, and such. This could later on grow into disappointment and doubt in God. For others, it could be that some oppressive pressure or influence from people around them or the society in general, causing them to go wayward into living and making decisions based on material gains and possessions. This can be to a point that even as they come before God, it is so that they can pray for blessings in areas where they want something to satisfy their personal benefits. Therefore, the essence of the cross in the message they hear no longer captivates or guides them. So the reality of our life in this world, in addition with our natural reflex to lean towards sin's ways, makes spiritual renovation extra hard. Therefore, when we are not often renewing ourselves in our understanding and application of God's word to our spirit and living, it will branch out to negatively impact other channels of our lives. We will get more and more used to a life that does not please the Lord and take on the likeness of the wayward prodigal son. This means that we start to no longer be contented and joyful with what the Lord provides. Then, it may lead us to distance ourselves from God when we go by our own decisions, growing proud of our successes. However, if the person is loved by God, God's discipline will surely come upon them one day, as it is said in Hebrews 12 verse 6, because the Lord disciplines the one He loves, and He chastens everyone He accepts as His son. Because God loves the person, He will not let the person fall too far away until they give their life over to the influence and deceptions of the world. And truth be told, when a person is in this spiritually detached state to God, they will also feel miserable eventually because very much like Lot, they could perhaps enjoy their lives for a bit, but only to a certain extent. They will realize that what they have lost is much greater than what was gained initially. So, how do we get a spiritual renovation? Firstly, we need to know what is spiritual renovation. In simple terms, it basically means to reconcile with the Lord, drawing close to Him once again. It could also mean to rekindle our first love with God, that reliance and submissiveness towards Him. When we pray for the Lord to work within us, it should be because we have realised that there are cracks and gaps in our present relationship with Him, not out of some other reasons like removing our weaknesses or becoming a better version of ourselves, because this will gradually be the subsets or byproducts of a God-centred life. And the way to receive a good renovation work in our spirit is to be willing to humble down, repent, and go back to hearing, internalising, and enjoying the Gospel again. If a person is being bounded by greed in worldly things, then the gospel should help them relearn the value and nature of these fleeting possessions and achievements, that when least expected, they fade away. And just like it says in Matthew 24 verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words will never pass away. Also, the gospel helps remind us of our one true and relentless enemy. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. However, for those who trust and rely on Christ, we shall not perish but have eternal life. These are just some snippets of how God's words can do its renovation works deep within us. But all in all, the gospel should help our minds to be clear in truth, our emotions to be guided by His love, and our will to be strengthened in His promises. Brothers and sisters, when we do all this and examine that we can indeed be joyful and satisfied with God's presence in our lives, then we will know that we are on the right track in the progress of our spiritual renovation works. It takes time. It takes some wrestling through. But just like how David was in the wilderness, 
and in unfavorable conditions, he too found solace and contentment within him. How? In Psalm 63 verse 1 to 3, it says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Because David is truly willing to be near to the Lord, thus he often can test and approve God's power and glory in his life. This is a life that has gone through spiritual renovation. Does your spirit need some renewal, brothers and sisters? May this message help you navigate your way around rebuilding or strengthening your relationship with the Lord today. God bless.